During a time of great prosperity and peace in the flourishing Garden of Islam, when philosophers and scholars excelled all others in the quality of their writing, and engineers and architects dazzled in the beauty of their buildings, scientists and inventors devised the most marvelous of innovations, some of which are before your very eyes today. Of all the creatures that surrounded him, man envied the birds most of all. Ho oh, to soar like that, on the wind, through the clouds, how wonderful to be free, and how impossible. But to certain people, nothing is. Surely, one man dared to imagine. If you studied the birds and fixed their wings to your body, you would be able to fly. But could a flying machine really work? Could a skeleton of bamboo, tied together by silken strips and covered with eagle feathers strapped to a man's back, actually simulate the intricate gliding effect of a bird's wing? Where a delicate aerodynamic balance exists, to enable a forceful stream of air to flow over and under its wings, lifting and propelling the bird forward, allowing it to fly. And so the inventor of the flying machine, Abbas bin Firnas, presented himself to the crowds on a hill near Cortuba, Spain, in the year 880, where, as the chronicles recount, he covered his body in a bird costume, guided himself into the harness, and told the crowd, by guiding these wings up and down, I should ascend like the birds. If all goes well, after soaring for some time, I shall return safely by your side. To which he launched himself into the air, and by means of ingenious movable tail flaps, flew to a significant height for a considerable time, and became the first man to fly. Now, Abbas bin Firnas was 70 years old by the time he became the first aviator. Yet he had, as a poet, astrologer, musician and astronomer, long been a principal member of the cultural court of the great Umayyad Caliphate in Andalusia, Spain, during the late 800 CE. Its capital, Cordoba, was flowering with scientific invention and artistic ideas. And in this rich, exciting environment, he delighted in the mystery of the unknown, perfecting the cutting of crystals and widely influencing the development of astronomy in Europe. Yet it was his flying machine which astonished his colleagues in the Muslim scientific community most, chronicling him as the man who jumped off the earth. In time, others followed Abbas bin Firnas. The Turkish flyer, Ahmad Chalabi, launched himself over the Bosphorus in the 17th century. Florentine artist and scientist Leonardo da Vinci designed flapping wing machines, gliders and helicopters. Further attempts at gliding though were only made two centuries later, a thousand years after Abbas bin Firnas. And only in the 20th century were the principles of gliding and soaring on air currents finally understood inspired by a man who so treasured the boundless sky over his beloved Andalusian Caliphate that he wished to reach out and touch it. <laughs>